it's very clearly casual Wednesday because I had errands to run all morning. Anyways, <clears throat> hey guys, it's Kirsten, and for this week's video, I want to talk about something that I know I've struggled with and I'm currently still struggling with and something that um, I'm seeing become a lot more common, and that is uh, self-deprecation. And if you don't know what self-deprecation is you, or you're not familiar with the term, you're probably still familiar with the concept. Um, self-deprecation is when you are... Uh, belittling or devaluing yourself or being just completely overly modest and then kind of framing it as something comical or something funny. Um, it's really common in, um, you see a lot of stand-up comedians do it, it's really really common in um, that sort of scenario and it's also really common on websites like Tumblr and now Facebook because Tumblr is like slowly trickling into Facebook. Um, but a really good example, um, kind of like an example I feel like everyone has seen is you see like a picture of like a trash can and someone will just be like, oh, it's me. You know, like that kind of humor where um, you're taking something that feels relatable to a lot of people that's a little bit um, devaluing or kind of poking fun at yourself and like laughing at it. So people being like, you know, my life's a flame and dumpster fire, but I'm still getting along, like those types of things. Um, or at least that's the type of self-deprecation I'll be kind of talking about today. Um, and it's really interesting because self-deprecation kind of isn't necessarily like a super bad thing. Like um, when I was looking it up earlier on Wikipedia, apparently self-deprecation was something really encouraged by philosophers of stoicism um, as a way to help yourself when other people were mocking you. So if someone was insulting you or mocking you or making fun of you, instead of feeling really bad about it or kind of like withdrawing from it, you would take advantage of the situation and take power in the situation and be like, yep, you know, you're right. Like kind of take the power away from the people who are mocking you by mocking yourself as well. So they no longer had that like ability to make you feel bad. Like you took that away from them, which in and of itself is an interesting dynamic and kind of empowering where it's like, I, I'm in control of how bad I feel right now, like you don't get to control that. And I think that in and of itself, not a bad thing, but I do feel like um, it's become, it was interesting. I was talking to my coworker about this and she said this thing that I thought was really interesting, but she's like, it's basically trendy to make fun of yourself online. Like it's become a cool thing to make fun of yourself online. And I do agree for some people and in some circles, that's totally true. Like it's just become a thing to kind of poke fun at our shortcomings and put it out there something comedic and that's not bad like you see it all the time like a lot of um comic artists do it and since comic artists are becoming more and more mainstream you see it um sometimes with artists like um adam ellis if you know him uh he does a lot of really funny um kind of self-deprecating uh biographical comics sarah anderson does stuff like that and they're really funny because they're relatable it's like this image of a person who hasn't done laundry in three weeks or is setting the bar super low or doing the bare minimum. And we're like, oh man, I feel like that sometimes. And the problem for me that I see is when that kind of goes from just being a funny way to talk about something a little bit more serious to using it as a way to not deal with an actual underlying problem. So in my experience, um, like my personal experience, uh, I started noticing stuff like this a lot on Tumblr a few years ago, and like, I used Tumblr a lot. It was like my favorite website to use for a really, really long time. And then sometime last year, I realized when I was on that website, I wasn't feeling super good about myself because I found myself relating way too hard to a lot of these like funny, poke fun at yourself type jokes, but they were all poking fun at things that actually really, really affect me. Like... I would be like, oh man, I feel like such a trash can today. Like I didn't do anything today. Time to lie in bed and watch YouTube for 16 hours. But then I'm like, I've definitely done that. And that was a symptom of my depression or it was a symptom of my anxiety or it was a symptom of something else that I'm dealing with. And I was like, you know, it's very possible that we're becoming too comfortable joking about something instead of actually addressing it as a problem. Like it's one thing to make fun of yourself about something and kind of use humor to talk about a serious thing but then to actually talk about that serious thing and kind of work on it or to just use it to pretend it's not as big of a problem as it is. Um, so, and I, I'm not saying like we shouldn't have this type of humor. I'm not being like super serious. Like we only need to talk about stuff seriously. Um, I think we need to strike a balance because I'll think about things like that and then start to notice it in other people because I have friends who are wonderful artists, wonderful, wonderful artists, but they're struggling like a lot of artists are to find work 
or to get their stuff seen or to feel like they're kind of figuring stuff out. And these friends will post really funny memes or, you know, things on Tumblr, pictures, whatever, kind of being like, oh, you know, failed another day today. Like, and it's the jokes themselves are funny in the moment. But when I talk to those people kind of privately behind closed doors, you really like I have found that my friends really do struggle with depression and with anxiety and feeling like low self-worth or low self-confidence. And those jokes are a way for them to kind of bring it up, but they're actually really struggling behind it. And I just want to know that they're okay and that they're not falling back on using those jokes and not actually trying to deal with a real problem, um, if that makes sense. Um, and so I became really aware of it happening with my friends. And then I started noticing it happening um, with people commenting on my work online. So um, when I post stuff on Instagram, I get, you know, a lot of comments and messages and emails and stuff of people saying, you know, this was really inspiring. This is really great. It inspired me to do work and it inspired me to like try something different. And I think that's wonderful. That makes me so happy when people tell me stuff like that. But I also get like an uncomfortably large amount of people saying things to me like, man, you're so good. I'm so terrible. Like, how do, why do I even try? Like, I'm so bad compared to you, but you know, I'm still trying to do it anyways, but I'm just like so bad compared to you. Like, don't even look, it's not even good. And it's a lot of times framed in uh, poking fun at yourself comedic way because you go to their profile and their like bio quip will just be like, you know, just your run of the mill, golden trash can trying to draw every day, but not doing it well. And it makes me really sad because I feel like because it's become so commonplace to make these types of jokes and to, for self-deprecation to be just such a normal part of the humor we have, this kind of like cynical millennial humor that we have, that people don't realize that like you start to internalize some of those feelings and you start to actually feel it. Like you start to actually believe it. And that can make you feel not super great. Like... I mentioned before, like I used to be on Tumblr all the time. I'm back on it now, but I took like a year off from it because it just was making me feel super terrible. And it's, it's frustrating because I understand why we use the humor. It makes it easier for us to talk about something and reach out to people in a way that we will, we feel like is not as, um, likely to push people away or make them uncomfortable. It's a way for us to kind of hint at stuff that truly bothers us without feeling like we're telling someone, hey, I have depression, this is going on in my life right now. Because some people aren't comfortable doing that, so they mask it with something that's a little bit funny in order to, to cope with it a little bit better. Um, and I feel like the reason I want to bring it up is, like I said, not to stop people from using this type of humor, but to make sure you're not using it as some kind of crutch or using it as a thing to rely on instead of actually coping with or at least addressing some of the stuff that might be going on with you because when people are sitting there being like super self-deprecating about their art like this is specifically in my experience and like with like my circle of friends and peers and things like that it is so bad for you to say self-deprecating things about yourself and your artwork it is not only bad for your self-esteem and for your mental health, it's like super damaging to your career options. It's super damaging to your ability to succeed because, um, and I will talk about this. I've probably mentioned it before and I will talk about this again because it is super duper important. You need to be the number one person supporting your artwork. You need to stand behind your artwork. You need to love what you do or at least pretend really convincingly that you do even if you don't feel like you're as good as you wanna be or you feel like you can improve or you're not like super happy with where you are you still need to stand up for your art because if you don't, no one else is going to. It's a super competitive industry. There's millions and millions of artists out there that you're competing with. People aren't going to spare the time of day. Like these industry level professionals are not gonna spare the time of day for people who can't even stand by their own artwork. So if you start off a conversation with someone that here's my artwork, it's not very good, but here's my artwork, suddenly instead of looking at your artwork objectively they're looking at it through the lens of oh well they think it's not very good so they already have a biased opinion about it now they're already going into it thinking it's not good because you don't think it's good so you end up shooting yourself in the foot like you end up shooting yourself in the foot with opportunities that could potentially be there because you set yourself up for people to think it's bad and that's kind of why i think this is so important like it's you can have self-deprecation humor 
but not have it kind of come back and hurt you, if that, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so I just feel like make sure you know where it's coming from. Um, make sure you know you're not doing it in a way that actually has lasting effects on you or is a way that like in a way that actually affects you emotionally because it's it's really hard <laughs> to feel um, confident in your work all of the time. I get that. Like I totally get that. I feel that I feel that very deeply. But um, know that you have to you have to support your art if you want other people to support it. And you have to also support yourself because it's I'm going to have plenty of other videos talking about self-love and depression and anxiety and dealing with a lot of the struggles of feeling good about yourself. But know that there is a point where kind of poking fun at yourself goes too far and just start to realize like, am I just finding these jokes and these memes funny or are they just like a little bit too relatable? And then use that as a stepping stone to kind of address issues that you might have been ignoring. Obviously it's not like you stop looking at them and then everything is better and then you're not depressed anymore. Like that's not it. It's just everything in your life is made up of like the things that are in front of you and the things that you look at all the time and the things that you absorb. And even though like depression isn't entirely environmental factors, like obviously it is a mental illness because there are things going on in your brain that you can't control. A lot of times for a lot of people, environmental factors it affect your behaviors and your moods and if you're surrounding yourself by jokes that just make you feel worse about yourself that's not gonna do anything to help you um yeah that's just my two cents on it I just feel like my friend like my coworker, she was correct my friend and my coworker, she was correct um it has almost become cool and commonplace to kind of fall back on these jokes. So I think it's just, it's important that we can laugh at them, but know that it's not, it's not a fair representation of who you are and to not let it kind of overwhelm you. Because if you feel really bad about your artwork and you're looking at things that make you feel worse about your artwork, it's a really messed up cycle that ends up making you feel worse about yourself in the long run. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think think that's it for today. Um, I mostly just wanted to talk about that because I've noticed it coming up a lot lately. And again, it's not new, new information or anything like that, but it does, um, it does affect, it does affect you. It affects you more than you think, or at least in my case it does. Um, so yeah, if you have any experiences with realizing that you deal with a lot of self-deprecation, um, and you were able to kind of work around it or grow from that. I want to know your experiences. I want to know how that worked out for you. Or if you struggle with it, I want to know how are you coping with it? Because, um, I know for a fact, I'm not the only one who feels like this sometimes, but I am trying to get better about it. I am 100% still someone who is very self-conscious about my art and about my career and about what I do, but I'm trying to be more aware. And that for me personally has been the first step is becoming aware because once you understand what's going on, it becomes a little bit easier to break down things and understand the steps that you can potentially take to break down a little bit of all the barriers in your life and the uh, struggles going on in your life. So yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate um, the support I've gotten so far. I'm really excited to do more of these videos and to get feedback from you guys. Um, like this video if you liked it and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this as well as if you want to continue seeing art videos uh, posted on Mondays. This past Monday I did post a video talking about my most regularly used art supplies because I know that is a question I get a lot so go ahead and give that a watch if you haven't already and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a good day. Bye!